the thing about light is light is harmless, especially as I say, LEDs and not lasers. So it's relatively easy to do human research with LEDs. The, the FDA has said that LEDs are non-significant risk devices, so you can't do any damage with them. Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gamble Red, and today we'll be talking about how red light therapy is safe for everybody. Not just for 95% of people, but for everybody. Now over the past couple of years, I've noticed a disturbing increase in reports of side effects on social media with people using red light therapy devices. Luckily, most of these issues are mostly superficial or temporary. Anything from skin redness to a little bit of hyperpigmentation or rosacea. Sometimes there's skin dryness or itchiness. Sometimes it's fatigue or dizziness. Or overall, it's just a lot of reports of being burnt or being uncomfortably hot. And even the top red light therapy influencers can't ignore it anymore, and so they've just pivoted to normalizing it, saying that it's normal for a small percentage of their customers to suffer from adverse reactions. And so this is a big pivot because if you go back to their original blogs, their ultimate guides to red light therapy, the everything you need to know about red light therapy guides, they didn't mention these side effects before, so these are new. So they can't tell you that it's normal because they would have mentioned it eight years ago when the panels were all lower intensity. So it's more likely this has correlated with each subsequent generation of panels becoming more powerful and then the influencers normalizing overdosing and high intensities and heating. But just listen to this recent talk by Dr. Scott Faulkner. And we know, you know, there's been over 100 million patients treated in clinical settings in the last 20 years. Not one single documented side effect. We know it's never going to hurt someone. You know, the Hippocratic Oath is in perfect condition here. We will never hurt anyone with PBM, but we can certainly help them. And we just need to keep having that message out. So according to Dr. Faulkner, there are practically no reported side effects or harm given from clinical grade red light therapy, where they generally use lower intensities, targeted treatments, mostly non-thermal, minimal heating at best. So there's a big discrepancy between what's being reported in the clinical science of very minimal side effects, if any, and what we're seeing in the commercial grade units that are becoming more and more powerful. Or we can even hear Dr. Stefano talking with Dr. Hamblin about the same issue. That's, that's yeah. interesting because there's no, I mean, there's, there's really for those, you know, class one, I mean, a lot, just for the, the audience, the, the LED helmets, they're class ones. And so yeah. they have zero, zero, zero Absolutely, side effects. Yeah. There's literally no, in, in fact, when it comes to photobiomodulation, right, the official, you know, statement, you know, even coming out of the FDA is it's clinically insignificant risk of photobiomodulation. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's safe because the potential for something that has such negligible risk to make dramatic changes in the world is off the charts, but yet no one is screaming loud enough, apparently, for people to listen. You know, as we said earlier, the general public doesn't really understand photobiomodulation. And, it, you know, if you come up with a helmet, it looks like some high-tech thing and people, uh, you know, they're obviously afraid of something going wrong and there being some sort of lawsuit, but, you know, they don't really understand it. But as you say, these are demonstrably safe. Now, I don't know, Dr. Stefano, if he has any authority in the industry, but I like his attitude. There should be no problems with using red light therapy. They are less than class one devices. They are ultra low risk. So if you've got a class two medical device, then that's actually a ranking of risk and it's not necessarily a ranking of benefits. Now, of course, the big caveat is that red light therapy is very safe. You don't really run into a biphasic dose response or adverse reactions until you start getting uncomfortably hot. Probably because the discovery of LEDs, light emitting diodes, which are much cheaper than lasers, much more accessible, they don't have any safety risks. They have kind of taken over from laser therapy. Is there is there any risk? Can you ever do too much light? Not in humans. I mean, you know, provided your device doesn't make the tissue uncomfortably hot. But with LEDs, you never generally get too hot at all. Mm -hmm. 
So as Dr. Hamblin says, you really would only run into issues if you're getting into the higher heating regions with these red light therapy devices. And I don't think Dr. Hamblin really realizes when he's talking to certain influencers and they're asking him biased questions if it's okay to overdose and if it's okay to have heating. I don't think he realizes how much heat the latest generation panels are really putting out. And so the intrinsic safety of red light therapy is that we should listen to our body's senses of our heat responses if it feels too warm or if we feel like it's burning, obviously we would stop the treatment and we would reconfigure our parameters. I see. So with humans, it's, it, I think it's very difficult to get to the upper end where you start to lose the benefits and even do any damage. As I say, because as I said, there's a natural fail safe in humans, which it gets too hot. And people are not going to sit there while you kind of heat them up with a laser or a light source. They're going to go, ouch, that's, that's, that's too hot. Um, so provided you don't make things too hot, you're almost certainly not going to do any damage. But unfortunately, a lot of brands and influencers claim to be medical grade or clinical grade photobiomodulation, when in reality, they're outputting a lot more intensity and power and heat than what the clinical devices actually use. So they're not actually clinical grade. Combine that with the influencers normalizing, overdosing and overheating and high intensities, then I fear a lot of people are overriding their senses and they're tolerating more intensity and heating than they should be because they were promised better benefits or better penetration or something else you know, that they have to fit into the crowd of, of calculating big numbers when it's obviously not the case. And yes, listen, there is a lot of bio-individuality with red light therapy treatments, especially when it comes to effectiveness and sensitivities. Is that different people respond differently. So some individuals are highly sensitive to light, red, near infrared light. Um, some individuals, as I say, are like blocks of wood. You can shine light on them all day and nothing will happen. I mean, the majority are in between. You know, it's like a bell curve. It is the hypersensitive individuals that will most often complain that they got adverse effects from photobiomodulation. Okay. And then your question is, how do you know who these hypersensitive individuals are? And the answer is, well, they're hypersensitive. They complain about all sorts of things. You know, they're allergic. They uh, don't like loud noises. They don't like bright light. They uh, can only eat certain kinds of food. You know, their whole life seems to be governed by being hypersensitive. So if you're going to treat these people with photobiomodulation, be very careful. because. <laughs> They're the ones that complain <laughs> all sorts of things going wrong. <laughs> you know, the, the majority of people, as I say, in the middle, and it's difficult to overdose them on light. I'm not saying you can't do it. So like Dr. Hamblin says, if it's along a bell curve or like a normal curve, that there's a statistical distribution for how people respond to red light therapy. Again, it kind of fits in with a lot of aspects of medicine that it's based on statistics and we don't know based on the individual level until they actually try it and they have to experiment and see what works best for them. And some people are like hypersensitive. You, so, you know, you said, can you do damage with light? Well, a very few people are like hypersensitive. <laughs> And you can tell who these people are because they're sensitive to everything. You know, they're the ones that don't like bright lights or loud noises or they don't right. like smells from perfume. You know, they, right. They're sort of sensitive to everything. So they're, what, they're the ones who will claim that the, if you shine light on them, it's giving them a headache, it's making them jumpy and jittery and... But they're very few. I mean, it's, it's not a common thing. Mm -hmm. But Dr. Hamblin says it's very few people reporting this. It's not common. And so if influencers are saying that a consistent percentage of their customers are suffering from adverse reactions, they are contradicting what Dr. Hamblin is saying and what all these other doctors are saying. 
And if you're new to red light therapy, you should be mindful if you're in that category of people that if you're hypersensitive to smells or hypersensitive to EMFs or hypersensitive to flicker or hypersensitive to a lot of other environmental issues, you might be more sensitive to red light therapy. And so that's why a lot of starting guides do start everybody off at lower intensities and lower doses just to make sure that small percentage of people are taken care of that they don't jump into a high dose right away and suffer an adverse reaction. So we tell everybody to start out low just to capture that small percentage of people that are sensitive. And so I want 100% of people to be able to use and try red light therapy for them. And so if you're doing clinical grade red light therapy with an LED array, some of these studies are only using three milliwatts per centimeter squared on people. Some are using nine or 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared. Some are using 20 to 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared. You don't see a lot much higher than that with large LED arrays. So at 20 or 30 milliwatts per centimeter squared, you will not see any significant percentage of people reporting side effects with red light therapy, and it's extremely safe and it's extremely effective. And so I do hope the other brands and their influencers are able to take this seriously and take some steps to make their devices and their recommended protocols much more safer for everybody. It doesn't need to be about money, it doesn't need to be about ego, it doesn't need to be about placing blame. Like we do in engineering and in science, we don't wanna play the blame game because that just wastes time. And we cannot tolerate any adverse reactions with red light therapy. Not only is that a lie, but it's kind of psychotic. Like, don't, don't normalize that, please. Like, you've normalized false advertising of intensity. You've normalized heating. You've normalized excessive intensities. You've normalized overdosing. And what did you think was going to happen? So, you know, I've been labeled the fear monger for years of trying to warn the industry about this. Uh, but now, you know, unfortunately, I'm kind of vindicated and I get to say I told you so. But unfortunately, I don't like saying I told you so when it means people have been harmed. And so you don't have to listen to me if you think I'm biased. Just listen carefully to what the real researchers and doctors have to say. They actually care about your health and the science and your safety. Thanks for tuning in.